Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. You know, over the years, I think I've lost track how many tanks I've, uh, I've decorated, picked out substrate, added rocks, you know, picked out rocks, to arrange the rocks, arrange the wood, arrange the, uh, the plants, either real or artificial. I mean, it's just hundreds probably. And over that time, I've developed uh, certain things that I look for and I used to kind of work with what they call the, the rule of thirds, where you uh, divide things up into, into, a th into thirds and make each of those points one of the key points in the aquarium. And, uh, but over the years, what's happened is I've, I've sort of developed something that's more comfortable for me that I find more, more appealing. So let me, share, let me just share with you my thoughts on the decorating of a tank and maybe this this is something you'll be able to use and maybe can help you in the setup and the decorating of your tank so that you find it very, very aesthetically pleasing and uh, a piece of art that you're proud of. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. This tank would probably be considered a little bit um, a little bit boring by some, in that it is a very simple center design where everything is concentrated in the middle. Nothing is really really off. It definitely is a violation of the law of thirds, where people seem to think where. If you want to make something interesting, you have to have it in thirds. This tank is not like that. This tank had everything offset to the right until just recently, where I put a concentration of plants in the middle and a lot of rock work around the plants, creating a bit of an island in the middle of the aquarium. Some people might like this design. Some people might think it's overly simple. But me, personally, I like it. And if I look at my history in setting up tanks, I do tend to lean in the direction of balance. Now, just as a tip, I really like to have rocks positioned in front of plants, whether they're artificial plants or real. I think the uh, difference in textures between the substrate, you have the substrate going on, the rock, and then the plants. So you have a lot of different sort of textures going on, and I like that a lot. I think they kind of complement and offset each other. I also like to set things up so that the fish have places where they can swim between. I like watching fish swim between things. And I also like to be able to break up the line of sight if a particular fish is being very antagonistic. There's a place where a fish can go and hide out for a minute. So you can see there's some nooks and crannies in between the plants and rocks where a fish can kind of go and chill out. And there are some slightly dimmer or less bright areas in the back of the tank. And again, these are areas where fish can relax, where it's not quite as bright and the fish might feel a little bit more secure, a little bit more comfortable. So this is a tank with everything concentrated in the middle. Whereas if you come over to this, this tank here, which is a live bearer tank, and what you'll see, let me just adjust the light here, is a bit of a balance. This is again, a bit of a balanced tank in that you have wood and a cave on one side 
balanced by a large rock on the right side. Now very often decor is used to hide things. Like in this case the heater is disguised behind that piece of wood. So you don't really see the heater back there. And from certain angles the rock might hide that sponge filter. Even though when you look at the tank straight on it's pretty obvious. But again, I leaned in the direction of balance with this tank. Getting back over to the 300 gallon, I did use the, uh, the decor to hide the intake of the FX6, which is at the back of the aquarium. Not sure if you can make it out back there, but there's a pre-filter sponge covering the intake and there's a temperature sensor and you have some some of the FX6 outputs back there you can see some of the bubbles and those bubbles are running into these plants and that and that sort of diffuses them a bit I also have two large outputs at the top of each end of the aquarium these are from the uh, pumps that are in the sump creating a tremendous amount of surface breakup and oxygen. But those, of course, don't really need to be disguised because they're so close to the top. So if you go over to the 210 gallon, again, what you're going to see here is you're going to see a bit of balance, especially with this large piece of wood that runs the length of the tank. It's actually, it was one piece of wood, but it had to be cut to be put into the tank. And what I've ended up with here is a bit of an, of an arch here that goes up and then swings over to the far corner of the tank. We have one plant here that when you're viewing the tank from the middle will block the view to the heater which is on the far wall. I also have the tank uh, a little bit off balance with a stack of rocks, the heavy, heavier objects over to the right. But overall, I mean, if you just follow the, the line of the wood which, and then follow down the plant, again, you have a very balanced situation. And again, this is not a tank that it is adhering to the rule of thirds, unless, unless you, uh, you figure this right here, where this plant and wood come down right here would be one third, and then you have another third right here. But it really isn't a rule of thirds. I am disguising an intake for the uh, canister filter by a stack of rocks. There's also a, pow a um, wave maker back here that is not really visible because I have this, uh, this wood running up the side here. So you don't really see the wave maker, which is right there. You can see it from the side. So again, using decor to block, you know, to block the view towards equipment. I don't really have a rock offsetting this plant here and I may move this larger rock I'll probably move it forward and to the left so that it sits a little bit in front of this rock here just to contrast the uh, the types of materials and uh, and then of course we have this this ceramic cave here which is where the Salvini likes to hang around trying to assert himself with the uh, Vieja that's about three times his size and weight. Yeah, go ahead, Salvini, give it your best shot. So when it comes to the so-called rule of thirds, I think the thing we have to keep in mind is 
what is a tank that is aesthetically pleasing to you. That's, that's, the, that's the real key of the whole thing. Whether you're talking about a rule of thirds, whether you're talking about decor hiding equipment, whether you're talking about uh, live plants or artificial plants, ultimately the question is, is the tank, is the tank appealing to you? And that's really, in the final analysis, that's actually what's going what's gonna to really matter. Here, now here's a tank that you could look at it and say, well, wait a minute, you've got some wood stacked here on this side. So you do have some of the, that's in one third there, and then another third, and then I've got this random plant in the corner. So this tank here is just sort of a random hodgepodge just everything kind of thrown around. But ultimately, I, I find the whole thing very, very aesthetic. So I've got three, three rock formations, three pieces of Mopani wood, a cave that's sort of a centerpiece that I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep because none of these fish use it. It used to be used by um, a Paratilapia polini, and then it was used by the Salvini. Those fish are no longer in this tank. So I'll probably end up pulling, that, pulling out that cave, but it's been sort of a little, it's been a, a bit of a centerpiece. And then I've got a, you know, different textures at work here between rock, wood, and again, artificial plants, because I have fish that eat up plants. But there's no rule that this is following except positioning things where I, where I felt they were comfortable. Now, we go over here to this tank. And this is a 55-gallon uh, planted tank. And what I have here is, you could almost say this one is in the rule of thirds, in that I have at a piece of wood nicely decorated in this third of the tank and then another piece of wood that extends out into this third. But then I have heavy, you know, heavy planting on the outsides. So ultimately with this tank, what you end up with is a balanced tank. A balanced look. And what you have going on here, more than anything else, are differences in textures between um, a large rock, small, small pebbles, working as a plant substrate, working its way into, you know, from live plants and wood, working its way into a plain white sand that overwhelms the camera. There we go. And then from that plain white sand, back into wood, rock textures, and live plants and, and pebbles. So this tank, the strength of this tank and the decor that is in the, uh, in the differences in, in textures, in different materials that are being used. But ultimately, looking back at this tank, I would have to say that what I have going on here is really just a balance. And even though in the past I have, I have uh, decorated tanks with extreme, you know, extreme decor on one side, it seems like ultimately I always go back to uh, a balanced look, which is certainly what I have going on here. So there you have it. That's, those are my thoughts. And as you can see, I more or less have abandoned the uh, rule of thirds. I still think of it from time to time when I'm, when I'm composing you know, uh, a photograph or a thumbnail or something like that. Uh, there is something to it. Uh, but over the years, I, I have, I've, I've found that I just put things where uh, they give me a sense of, of balance and where they appeal to me aesthetically 
and I've kind of gone full circle with the rules. And so bottom line, decorate your tank the way it looks good for you and how it most appeals to you. Uh, just real basic points, work with different materials, different textures, uh, different types of you know, substrate and rocks, uh, you know, put things together so they can, they can, um, they can contrast and in contrasting uh, really emphasize the, the beauty of, of, of the different objects and, and create uh, spaces that the fish can enjoy, swim in and out of, and, uh, and that you'll enjoy watching them swim in and out of. And ultimately, it's your canvas uh, for you to paint on, for you to do whatever ends up uh, being the most appealing to you personally. That's the number one rule in, in decorating a tank. And uh, that over the years, that's the rule that's, that's become the number one rule for me. Uh, not to say that the rule of thirds and all these other things are not important, but ultimately it's you that has to be happy. All right, so that's my message on, on decorating a tank. And if you like this video, you like the channel, be sure to give it, this video a thumbs up, uh, hit that bell, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I'll see you on Saturday for the uh, cichlids and coffee live stream. That's every Saturday at uh, 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member of the Garage Gang. And uh, that is uh, a Patreon monthly uh, member that supports the channel on a monthly basis. Starts for as little as $3 a month. Details are in the description. Thank you, my friends. You're the best. You rock. And I appreciate you stopping by.